Hey, what's up everyone? It's Asad here. Welcome back to the Fifth Crutch channel. In this video, I'll be teaching you one of my favorite ace tricks. This is called the Dream of Aces, also known as McDonald's Aces, uh, also known as Grandpa's Aces. There's a lot of names for this trick, but it's essentially the ace assembly plot classic and magic, a lot of different versions of this trick. Uh, this version in particular is especially compelling and super clean. You'll see why in just a second. Um, and I'm excited to share it with you. Before I get to the tutorial, just a quick plug. I realize it's been a minute since I've uploaded the video here. Uh, I'm sorry, no excuses. I have been busy though. The last couple months, I've been working on a brand new website, mint52.com. This is the new home for the Mint playing cards and the Mint collection as a whole. Uh, I've got a really big vision for the future of Mint, so it was important to me to kind of separate it from 52 cards a little bit and give it its own home. Uh, so check it out if you're interested. Uh, if you're subscribed to the email newsletter or you're following me on social media, then you probably already know about the website, but um, I haven't mentioned that on YouTube yet. So if you're just following me here on YouTube, then now you know. Um, if you missed the Mint 2 Kickstarter project, uh, then the mint decks are now available again at that website. Um, so I'll drop a link down below and uh, you can check it out. Okay, so let's get into the tutorial now for the Dream of Aces. All right, let's talk about the method for this effect. Now, part of the reason this routine is so clean is because it uses a set of gaff cards. Okay, so for the Aces, here's what we have. The Ace of Spades is completely normal. The other three aces are what are known as double facers, meaning there's aces on one side and on the other side of these cards, instead of backs, what you have are just three random cards. So these are single cards that are specially printed this way, okay? And double facers are super strong. There's a ton of really awesome applications for them. Um, if you were a backer of the Mint 2 Kickstarter project, then as a free gift, you would have received in your package uh, these Mint gaff packs. And uh, these include a set of eight gaff cards, three of which are these cards right here, which allow you to do this effect. Okay, but if you missed the project and you still wanna get this, they are available now again at mint52.com. They're super cheap, and uh, if you're a magician, it's really nice to have a set of gaff cards as they allow you to do really uh, powerful effects, okay? Um, if you don't have the gaff cards yet and you don't plan on getting them anytime soon, what you could do just to learn the effect is just grab any three aces and then with glue or tape or something, just um, attach three random cards like so. Now, if you eventually want to actually perform this effect, I highly recommend getting the actual gaff cards as it's going to make it much more deceptive. Okay, uh, but let's get into it. Here is the setup. Okay, so for the setup, the first step is I would take the three random cards that you have on the back of the aces, and I would remove those actual cards from the deck just to avoid any awkward uh, discrepancies later on. Okay, after you've done that, you wanna take the other aces, uh, the regular aces, and you wanna place them in a, a specific position. Okay, so you want them, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you wanna place them on the bottom of that nine card packet. So it's gonna be the 10th, 11th, and 12th position in the deck and place it right on top. Okay, just like so. And then the uh, gaff cards, um, the ace of spades, the regular ace of spades, uh, you just wanna put, like you, here you have the three other regular aces, you wanna just put them maybe a little bit above them when the deck is face up, like so, okay? And then the other aces, you just kinda wanna mix. In the performance video, I started with the aces already laid out, but if you're actually doing this, it probably makes more sense for them to start out in the deck. So I'm just gonna, randomly distribute those other uh, gaff cards that with the aces this way throughout the deck, like so. Okay, and the ace of spades is gonna be last, and then after the ace of spades, you're gonna have those three other aces right there, and then you have that nine card block. Okay, you might wanna rewind that a bit just uh, a few times just to make sure you get the setup right. But now you're ready to go. And at this point, uh, you're just gonna talk about how, you know, in every deck of cards, the aces are normally considered to be the most valuable. And as you're talking about this, you're just gonna spread through and remove. By the way, I should mention, after you have this set up in place, you wanna be careful not to spread through the deck face down because those face up cards, those double facer face up cards will, sh will flash. And that might be a little awkward. So just keep the deck um, intact or just face up. 
And as you're talking about how aces are considered to be, you know, the most valuable cards, you're just going to run through and remove those three gaff cards, place them on the table, and then you're going to keep going until you hit that ace of spades. You hit the ace of spades, you're going to place that there. You don't want to spread further now because you might run the risk of flashing those extra aces. So at that point, you just close right up and you turn the deck face down. Okay, now you can spread and do whatever you want, it doesn't matter. And you're going to arrange those aces in this formation like so. And uh, now you're ready to begin, okay? So here are the steps that you're gonna go through. You're gonna count one, two, three. You're gonna drop them on top of the first ace. You can deal them, I like to just kind of count them in my hand and I drop them. But you just place three, ace three cards on top of each of these aces and then three more cards on top of this ace. Now these should already be the three other aces, but they don't know that. Okay, one, two, three. And this is your position right here. And you can talk about how the ace of spades is like the, the leader ace, and so that's gonna be like extra special. You might wanna separate it out in the corner a little bit more. You can do whatever you want. There's a lot of flexibility in this trick. Okay, at this point you can just take the rest of the deck, place it inside the box if you want. You can do a little nice product placement. <laughs> Show the beautiful foil, that boss. Okay, I'm just kidding. Um, at this point, you're, you're ready. Okay, this has all been set up up to now, and now you're ready for the magic to begin. I'm gonna pick up the first group of three cards. I'm gonna place the ace face up in the third position, like so. I slowly square up. I do some sort of magic move, gesture, and I'm gonna be doing the Elmsley counts. Okay, I'm gonna assume that a lot of you are already familiar with the Elmsley Count. I'll cover it briefly for those of you who aren't, but I made a full in-depth tutorial for this move in the past, so I'll link you to that down below. Uh, but essentially what the Elmsley Count is, is it's a, it's a false counting technique that allows you to count through these cards while hiding that face-up ace. Okay, so you can see the ace, but by doing the Elmsley Count, it looks like it just vanishes. Okay, so let me... Let me break that down a little bit. It's in the third position, and here's what the Elmsley count is. You count off the first card. I'm holding the cards like this. I'm sliding the first card into my other hand, and at this point, I'm pushing a two-card block. So this is the second card and that face-up ace, that third card, as if they were one card. And I'm sli It's kind of hard to do slowly, honestly. I'm sliding them as one, so I'm basically pushing over everything above the bottom card, and as I swipe it into my left hand, I'm also depositing this left hand card underneath the remaining card in my right hand, like this. And then I count three, four. Okay, it's a rhythm thing. It's gonna take a bit of practice to be able to do a smoothie, but it goes one, two, three, four. Okay, it mimics just the counting process. Check that full length tutorial if you don't already know how to do this, uh, but it's a super valuable move, probably the most popular uh, and you know, common false counting technique there is. Now, because of the fact that you're using double facers, it allows you to do a really um, clean convincer that that ace has indeed vanished, okay? Because that ace is now gonna be at the bottom of this packet. But at this point, what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn the first card face up, turn the second card face up. At this point, I turn this two card packet left in my hand face up. I deal a single card and then I deal the remaining card, and I, yeah, I might want to flash the back of that last card, just as an extra convincer. That ace is gone. Okay, if you're not familiar with double facers, that is mind-boggling. That doesn't make any sense at all. You're going to do the same thing again for the second ace, but this time I like to do a little, a, little, a little bit differently. Instead of putting it in the third position, I put it in the second position, slowly close up, and this time I'll do the actual count. I won't do an Elmsley. I'll do what the Elmsley count is imitating. One, two, three, four. I show that the ace is still there. I do the magic move, snap, whatever it is, and then I do the Elmsley count. I think I flashed a little bit there. Let's do that again. So you're going to be here. I go one, two, three, four, do the move, and then the ace is now gone. Once again, same process as before. Flip, flip, flip the two-card packet over in your hand, deal, deal, gone. For the third ace, I do something a little bit differently. I'll pick up the three cards in my left hand, and then um, 
uh, I'm doing kind of a little bit of, there's a little bit of a discrepancy here that I'm gonna try to hide because uh, I don't want to flash this card right here. So notice how I'm picking this packet up, picking it up with my left hand palm down and I'm kind of keeping it down. I pick up the ace. As I pick up the ace, I kind of display it and I start to turn this hand over. In the process, I'm doing just this little bit of a get ready move. I'm pushing over this card slightly and I'm pulling it back, keeping a break there because I'm about to do a double lift. Okay, once again, I'm assuming um, if you've been following this channel for a while, you know what a double lift is. Uh, I'll drop a link down below if you want um, just kind of a more extensive tutorial on that. But I'm doing the get ready for the double lift and I'm kind of using this card as cover of that. It's, it's a minor detail, it's not that big of a deal. But I get that and then immediately I'm gonna place this ace on top of this card. And I kind of time it so that that card doesn't flash to the people in front of me. Okay, once again, it's a discrepancy. It matters more in video than it does in person because in person people probably wouldn't pick up the discrepancy anyways because what you're about to do next is you're gonna flip over those two cards above the break as once. So this card right here is gonna change. You run, if you don't hide this card, you run the risk of you know, placing this card here. They see that there's a red card right here, but then as you do double lift, they, do, they see a black card. That might throw people off a little bit, but once again, in person, no one would probably actually notice. I just, uh, this is a detail that I do for the video. Okay, so I place the card on top. I'm gonna be doing a double lift, flipping those two cards as one. I leave them out jogged a little bit, and then I'm kind of straddling them just to make sure that they remain uh, intact. So this is just a, just for a brief moment in time, I have first finger here, pinky on the other side, two hands on here, and I'm gonna be inserting these cards in between the two remaining face-up cards in my left hand. So I usually just spread a little bit and I just drop it right there. At this point, I can very cleanly turn my hand palm down again, displaying that the ace is in fact still there. I turn back over, and all I'm gonna do here is really with my uh, middle finger, my right middle finger, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna kind of pinch these two cards at the front first between my thumb and middle finger, and then using my middle finger, I'm just, all I'm doing is I'm sliding that bottom card of the double back into the pack, okay? It's, it's hardly even a move. And in the process, I usually just kind of wiggle the card a little bit, maybe push it out, and then I'm ready to do another magical gesture. Boom. I'll slowly spread, this is so convincing. And then I can just very kind of dramatically flip that card over. They just saw that it was an ace, and now it isn't. Okay, I'll do a little uh, convincer here. I'll kind of square up the two cards in my left hand. I'll turn both hands palm down, flashing the backs. Back like this. I throw off top single card here. I throw this card, and then I can throw this card. Really nice advantage of an ace. At this point, the trick is done. Now it's just all presentation. You can kind of dramatically show the three cards aligned with the ace hair. Slowly group them up, do a move, and then I'll usually do like this little flourishy thing. I turn my hand palm down, I push the cards kind of through my fist. You can reveal it however you want, but boom, those aces that they just saw vanish have reappeared next to the leader ace, the ace of spades. Super powerful trick. Uh, I hope you really enjoy that. Practice those Elmsley counts. That's really uh, what this trick comes down to is making those vanishes look really clean um, and convincing and then and then just building up to that dramatic reveal at the end. I hope you like that video. I hope you like this trick. If you do, please do give the video a like. Subscribe to the channel for more content in the future. And uh, I will see you next time. Peace.